1. Why truly smart people dislike socializing. We often feel exhausted not because of work, but due to meaningless social interactions. During holidays, if someone you haven't seen in years suddenly calls, it's probably just to make up the numbers. At that moment, firmly say no, because truly smart people don't socialize unnecessarily. If you're quite intelligent, chances are, 1. You socialize less than your friends, and 2. You worry whether this antisocial tendency is normal. Most of us know that smart people tend to be anxious and dislike socializing. They are sensitive and notice things more than others. However, a study published in the British Journal of Psychology goes further, indicating that smart people dislike socializing for a rather strange reason. The study surveyed 15,000 people aged 18, 28, and found that for average people, the more they socialize with friends, the happier they felt. This isn't surprising as humans are social animals. We need to chat, connect, and share experiences. From the days of hunting and gathering, our ancestors lived closely in small tribes, making the need for social interaction almost genetic for most people. However, scientists found that smart people are an exception. For those with higher IQs, the more they socialize with friends, the less happy they felt. But why? The reason is that smart people often focus on long-term goals. They have a desire and a drive to use their intelligence to create something greater than themselves. Think about a college friend or someone who started their own business. While pursuing their ambitions and goals, they had to minimize social interactions to focus on their work and achieve their objectives. Instead of spending time chatting, they push aside the need for social relief to avoid meaningless social interactions. When pursuing their grand purposes, smart people would rather stay home and work than go out to smile and chat, exchange phone numbers, and forget who's who the next day. 2. Relying on yourself is better than relying on others. Ordinary people might think relationships are all about money, but smart people know this is a perfect lie. If you are not capable, even if you have contacts among the upper class, you can't rely on them to bring any benefits. When you nervously introduce yourself at a party full of successful people, most of them won't pay attention to you. This kind of networking only drains your energy, wastes your time, and makes you more anxious. Smart people understand that relying on others is not as good as relying on yourself. It's not that they don't value friendship. They do. But they know that to achieve great things, meaningless networking doesn't help much with their goals, except for making them feel good temporarily. When someone you haven't seen in a long time suddenly calls, it's usually just to make up the numbers. If someone who hasn't planned to meet you suddenly invites you for coffee, it's because they need something. If you get a sudden invitation to dinner without prior notice, it's likely because they want to vent. In these cases, smart people firmly say no because they never engage in pointless networking. People naturally need to talk and share to feel happy, but smart people control this urge and wait for bigger rewards. Sure, going out for drinks and having coffee with friends is fun, but it wastes the most important time of their youth. Therefore, we can all learn something from smart people. It's not that they don't value friendship, but they also value self-improvement. If you have free time instead of socializing, do what you need to do first. The social events can wait. 3. The greatest benefactor in life is yourself. People in the past used to say, if you open your heart, the cool breeze will come. If you lack strong abilities and a solid foundation, no amount of bowing, flattering, or pleasing others will earn you any favor. Someone once asked online, how can we recognize smart people around us? One impressive answer was, when you meet someone who understands your situation, respects your views and beliefs, and creates a comfortable space with you, they are likely smart. 
If you try to get closer, you'll notice they keep a certain distance, making you feel there's always a barrier between you and them. This person is likely much smarter than you. It's true. In social interactions, smart people are often friendly and close, but always keep a distance. They understand that the network theory is flawed. What truly helps you sail smoothly and move forward without obstacles is your own capability, not anything else. 4. Gathering pointlessly drains your energy. Some people say it's more accurate and straightforward to measure things in bulk rather than individually, and this makes sense. Whenever there's a small or big event, some people find every excuse to organize meals, parties, class reunions, and hometown gatherings. A bunch of people get together, eat, drink, and have so much fun, they forget to go home. Even if the alcohol ruins their health, their stomachs are in knots, and their families worry and complain, it doesn't seem to matter. If you ask them why they do this, the answer is likely, only by partying can we build good relationships and get things done. Is that really true? Of course not. I have a friend named Kwong. When he first started his advertising company, he wanted to build connections and get clients. So he pretended to be always available, attending every meeting and party. Once, to entertain a big potential client, Kwong stayed out all night, hopping from one place to another with the client. His wife was also away on a business trip, and with no one to watch the kids, they cried so much that Kwong's father had a health crisis. In the end, the client didn't give Kwong's company the advertising contract, saying they needed a more prestigious company for their key project of the year. The truth is, clients are very rational. Kwong's warm hospitality couldn't make up for his company's lack of expertise. Kwong concluded, I was foolish. In the business world, everyone judges you on your abilities. People can see clearly whether you're capable or not. Author Chu Kwok Bin once said, The main thing that drives social relationships is not friendship, but personal benefit. Pointless gatherings just serve to highlight old feelings, not prove your worth to others. Drinking ability is not the same as real ability. Friendships made over drinks start and end at the table. They can't sustain themselves or grow. If you keep indulging in this, you'll only exhaust yourself. 5. Not everyone is worth befriending. A woodcutter went up the mountain to chop wood and met a shepherd. The shepherd, wanting to kill time, watched his goats graze and tried to engage the woodcutter in conversation. To satisfy the shepherd, the woodcutter put aside his work and focused entirely on the chat. As night fell, the shepherd happily herded his well-fed goats home. Meanwhile, the woodcutter returned empty-handed, becoming a laughingstock among the people. You're a woodcutter, and he's a shepherd. You talk to him all day. His goats are full, but where is your wood? In life, many people are like this. They want to fit in or feel relevant so badly that they cling to anyone, forgetting their own path. In the fairy tale book Ali's Eternal Stop, it is written, in a lifetime, one will meet about 8,263,563 people, greet 39,778, know 3,619, and become close with 275, but eventually, they will all drift away in the sea of people. Connections come and go, and not everyone can be a friend. It's important to let go of those who don't share your values. Guan Ning and Hua Xin were once inseparable friends. They enjoyed poetry and discussions about life together. However, when there was a commotion with fancy carriages and horses, Hua Xin felt restless and had to go see. When he returned, Guan Ning had cut their shared mat in half, ending their friendship. 6. Without common goals, it's hard to be friends. Lu Xun and Runtu were close friends in their youth. 
They spent time together guarding watermelons, watching over fish, catching sparrows, and collecting seashells. However, when they met again years later, Runtu respectfully called Lu Xun Sir, creating a barrier between them that ended their childhood friendship. Author Xu Xiaoxian once said, As people reach a certain age, they tend to simplify their lives. In the end, they are left with two or three close friends, a cup of plain tea, and the life they want. In the remaining years of our lives, it's not necessary to invite everyone into our world. After time filters through our relationships, only two or three true friends remain, having outlasted countless superficial connections. If you like this video, please comment 1. And if you don't, comment 2. Your feedback means a lot to us. Thank you for your valuable time. 7. Being alone is better than meaningless socializing. I watched a short film about a social experiment called How Many People Do You Regularly Talk To On Your Phone? The participants in the film had hundreds of friends in their contacts, but when the director asked them to delete all the unimportant social contacts, they were left with just two or three people, knowing hundreds of people but only having two or three important ones. It turns out our busy days filled with networking and socializing are often with people who don't really matter. Of course, humans are social animals and socializing is unavoidable. But in the roughly 30,000 days of a human life, it's unnecessary to waste time and energy on useless relationships. Even the brightest and most successful people spend some time alone. Chinese artist and writer Mu Xin lived in seclusion on Mogan Mountain for six years. Despite the harsh weather, biting cold, and heavy snow, he wasn't discouraged. During that time, he created over 100 short stories and countless landscape paintings. Famous American writer O. Henry, after being imprisoned for embezzlement, used his time in jail to reflect and write many well-known short stories. American author Henry David Thoreau also lived alone in a forest near Walden Pond. During his two years of seclusion, he found peace and immersed himself in the vast natural world. When asked if he felt lonely, he said, I think spending time alone helps keep the spirit healthy. Socializing, even with smart people, can be tiring and boring. I've yet to find a friend who makes me feel as comfortable and close as I do when I'm alone. As many people today say, it's better to have quality time alone than low-quality socializing. If you feel out of place in noisy crowds and don't enjoy the hustle and bustle, then soar alone in the sky like an eagle, weave through the mountains like a river, face the cold night alone like a flower, and reach your peak in solitude. After all, Life is not just about noise and excitement, but also about having moments of quiet alone. 8. Your greatest benefactor is yourself. Why do we often participate in meaningless gatherings and cling to others? There are two main reasons. One is to seek connections, and the other is to emphasize social relationships. These two motivations lead some people to place their hopes on luck, mingling with friends in superficial social circles. Being part of the elite group feels like catching a favorable wind to soar high. However, as many often say to meet a benefactor, you must first become capable yourself. In the Chinese TV series, Like a Flowing River, Song Yun-hui, despite coming from a poor family and not engaging in social networking, gradually climbed higher on his own merit. He relied solely on himself. Yun-hui excelled in his exams but missed out on university due to failing a political test. He sought help tirelessly, even reading policies in the People's Daily under the scorching sun to retrieve his withheld acceptance letter. Understanding the rarity of his opportunity, Yun Hui studied diligently in college, seizing every learning chance. While friends played on the sports field, he immersed himself in books. 
Friends tried to get ahead through connections, but Yun Hui ignored such pursuits. Ultimately, he graduated top of his class and secured a job at the best chemical plant in the city. As the saying goes, if you open your heart, the cool breeze will find you. If you lack solid skills and a strong foundation, no amount of bowing and flattery will earn you favor. Meaningful networking doesn't come from broad connections, but from depth and substance. Stop engaging in pointless socializing. If your skills, resources, and status don't match your ambitions, all your efforts in socializing are futile. Let go of shortcuts and imaginary advantages. Only by planting a sycamore tree can you attract a phoenix. You must work hard to develop your strengths, create your future, and avoid lowering yourself to please others. Flattering others is less effective than improving yourself. Relying on others is less reliable than enhancing your own abilities. The greatest benefactor in your life is none other than yourself. 9. Five Types of People Smart people never help. People often say, intelligence is a gift, kindness is a choice. It's important to choose wisely where and with whom you share your kindness. Choosing to be kind-hearted is admirable, and being selective about who you are kind to is both good and right. However, no matter how kind you are, you must first know how to be kind to yourself, which means valuing your own kindness. Protect yourself and choose the right people to help. There are five types of help that are very dangerous. No matter how kind you are, you should learn to say no. 1. Don't help people who are like bees and foxes. People who don't appreciate help are often ungrateful. You can help them a hundred times and they'll take it for granted. But the day you can't help them, they will hold a grudge and blame you. Volunteering is great, but your energy is limited. You should only devote yourself to your country, your family, your life, and true friends who appreciate you. Don't waste your effort on those who are ungrateful. It's like keeping a snake in your sleeve. One day, you will get hurt by the very kindness you gave away. 2. Don't help without purpose and principles. Helping with no purpose or principles often involves violating personal principles or even breaking the law. Stay away from such people because you could get dragged into trouble. Many people stay friends with you only because of your money. Their purpose in everything is money. To achieve their goals, they can turn black into white and betray you. No matter how small or big, you can become a victim of such people. 3. Don't help beyond your limits. Everyone has limits. There are some things you just can't do on your own. Don't stretch yourself to please others at the expense of your well-being. This habit will only make your life harder and you will pay a high price. Helping others but putting yourself in a difficult situation can lead to more people needing to help you, causing more trouble. Helping like this becomes a burden for both you and the other person. 4. Don't help people with a victim mentality. These people always blame everyone else when things go wrong. Everyone is at fault except them. They constantly justify their bad behavior. Their lack of emotional maturity means they can't recognize their mistakes and take responsibility. On the other hand, they are arrogant and selfish, thinking they know everything and don't need to change or improve. They believe others need to improve, not themselves. They are so proud and stubborn that when someone points out their flaws, they become defensive and angry. They don't want to change and fear facing their insecurities. No matter how much you try, they will never change because they always see themselves as innocent and right. 5. Don't help those who give up easily. If someone around you is known for giving up easily, avoid trying to change them. No amount of kindness or encouragement will change them because they are stuck in a failure mindset. They believe they always lose or think success is too hard to achieve, 
so they prefer to quit early. Whether in relationships, careers, or personal goals, they can't commit to anything. They live inconsistently, without motivation, and only appear to try at the beginning. The world is full of different people, some close, some distant, some good, some bad. Be smart and alert to recognize who is sincere and deserving of your trust and kindness. At the same time, be especially careful to avoid the five types of people mentioned above to avoid wasting your kindness and bringing trouble upon yourself. Ten, three things. Smart people always keep to themselves. One, never badmouth friends. Smart people are selective about their friends, setting high standards. Once they consider someone a friend, they are genuinely committed to that friendship. While some might badmouth others they dislike, smart people understand the consequences. Speaking ill of others makes one seem untrustworthy and disloyal, which can drive people away. For instance, if person A badmouths person B to their mutual friend, the friend may lose trust in person A and distance themselves. 2. Avoid flattery. Smart people value honesty and straightforwardness over flattery. They believe that being sincere leads to genuine respect and trust. While flatterers may initially attract attention, their lack of sincerity eventually leads to distrust. People may begin to see them as manipulative and insincere. Instead, smart people speak thoughtfully and meaningfully, which earns them respect and admiration. 3. Keep personal matters. Private. Smart people know the importance of boundaries when sharing personal information. They understand that oversharing can invite unwanted judgment or negativity from others. Unlike those who openly share every detail of their lives, smart people are discreet about their personal matters. They avoid stirring envy or gossip, recognizing that not everyone has their best interests at heart. Sharing less can prevent misunderstandings and maintain privacy and dignity. In life, it's crucial to discern what to share and what to keep to oneself. Smart people understand the value of discretion in maintaining relationships and personal peace. 11. Enjoying life alone with three key traits. Living alone and getting used to solitude is not about running away, but standing strong amidst life's storms. Lonely people are often unfairly associated with a bleak and dull life, constantly labeled with the phrase, lonely until old age. There is a big difference between choosing solitude and being forced into it. Those who experience involuntary loneliness tend to have monotonous lives, declining over time. In contrast, those who embrace solitude find their days unexpectedly rich and fulfilling. You might not know, but people who actively choose and feel comfortable with solitude often share three characteristics. One, self-reliance and persistence. They don't depend on others and persist through their abilities. Flattering others may seem like a shortcut, but it's fraught with risks. Relying on others can eventually lead to trouble. Only by depending on oneself can one stand firmly, even if the path to success is challenging. Not flattering others shields them from potential trouble. This is the far-sighted and wise approach to life. 2. Contentment and Satisfaction with Life Seeing today as better than yesterday is a blessing. Achieving more at 30 than at 20 is a source of pride and happiness. However, some people constantly compare houses, cars, status, and even relationships only to end up feeling dissatisfied and frustrated. Those accustomed to living alone focus on their goals, understanding their abilities and the struggles of life, and enjoying the fruits of their efforts. In a crowd, you'll see many people showcasing themselves and competing. Without exceptional conditions, you'll feel left behind, failing to see your daily progress, thus missing opportunities and luck. Truly, if you can't enjoy what you have, 
live in the present, and curb insatiable greed, you'll unknowingly fall into a deep pit. Striving daily to learn, improve, do good work, love family, cherish life, and create more value than yesterday will bring you lifelong luck. 3. Independence and Mature Mindset In a flock of sheep, if the lead sheep is guided, the rest will follow. This is the herd effect. If you blend into a group and blindly follow the crowd without considering if it's the right path for you, you'll never know where you truly belong. Truly wise people seek opportunities within a group but can also break away, living positively on their terms, unaffected by any community. Therefore, they often go against the tide and walk alone at times. Luck doesn't come from winning the lottery or getting something by chance, but from steadily and surely progressing toward success. In this ever-changing era, be yourself, embrace your unique beauty, and remember that life is yours to live, not anyone else's. If you find these stories inspiring and they motivate you to take action, please comment 9. If not, comment 0. Your feedback means a lot to us. Thank you for your valuable time. 12. Why are smart people often alone? Instead of saying smart people are often alone, think of it this way. Smart people choose to be alone. At the end of a busy day or week, how we spend our evenings and weekends reveals our true selves. Many people enjoy noisy places, so they go shopping, visit bars, chat online, or hang out with friends. Meanwhile, there are people who don't care about what's happening outside and choose to stay in a quiet corner, lost in their own world. Have you ever looked at yourself and realized you are one of these people? In life, smart people often prefer being alone. This makes them seem lonely. Of course, everyone has a different lifestyle. This isn't a measure of someone's success or intelligence. But being alone is a state they actively choose. They avoid noisy crowds and meaningless relationships, maintaining a calm mind to pursue their own goals. In a way, solitude is a destination their souls continually seek. Why do smart people behave this way? Psychologists have found the following reasons. 1. Deep understanding of loneliness. Smart people understand the saying, it's lonely at the top, which others might not get. They know true talent is rare and that in a crowd, it's hard for two strong individuals to coexist without fierce competition. Smart people who dislike conflict choose to avoid these situations, knowing that winning can sometimes lead to isolation. Being alone helps them avoid unnecessary troubles. 2. Freedom and Solitude most social relationships are useless, often just groups pretending to be happy while trying to escape their own emptiness. Spending too much time in such social circles can trap one's time and mind. So, smart people let go of these ties, freely facing themselves and spending most of their time alone. 3. No fear of loss. Smart people don't follow the crowd, avoid pointless conversations, and don't care about gossip. They focus on what they believe is right and refine what is valuable. Hence, they never fear missing out on anything because they've already left part of society behind. 4. Strong observational skills. You might find these people sitting quietly in a corner, observing everything around them. Though they may not say much, their brains are working intensely, evaluating life and people's expressions and actions. 5. Dislike for drama. They know life's events can cause unnecessary stress and annoyance. Living for themselves is already challenging enough, so there's no need to invite more trouble. Others can think what they want. Smart people don't feel the need to be acknowledged by everyone and avoid unnecessary drama. 6. No need to prove their worth. When someone is independent and strong, they appreciate the small things in life and are content with the present. 
They can support themselves without relying on others and don't need to prove their worth to anyone. 7. Careful communication and true friendships. Smart people maintain relationships they want to keep and don't easily let new people into their circle unless they share similar values and views. 8. Intimidating abilities. Outstanding individuals often go about their lives alone because they can truly do everything by themselves, whether it's going to the doctor or eating out. They don't fear speaking the truth or dealing with challenges. 9. Unusual thoughts and actions. Most geniuses are seen as eccentric, often doing things that are hard to understand and even being shunned for being too different. Their unique perspectives and experiences make it difficult for others to truly understand and accept them. 10. Focus on personal goals. Sharing dreams and future plans with those who don't understand them can turn them into a joke. Thus, casual and aimless socializing doesn't exist in their world. People might think they seem tense, but in reality, they are just focused on their goals. In conclusion, smart people don't need to adapt to social changes through numerous interactions. Some people are destined to be lonely all their lives, but this isn't sad. It might be their path to greatness. So, if you have only a few friends, enjoy walking alone, are happy living by yourself, and are okay with it all, you might be an extraordinary person. 13. Six Things Smart People Never Say Smart people have important social communication skills and know how to interact well with others. Here are six things they usually avoid saying. 1. No insults. During arguments, no matter how angry they get, smart people never use insults to attack others. They know that arguments should focus on the issue at hand and not use personal attacks as an excuse to hurt others. Many tragedies happen due to temporary anger. Some conflicts that could be resolved with a smile escalate because of a hot temper. Smart people understand that poorly expressed anger can turn a simple argument into a serious personal dispute, damaging relationships without solving the problem. 2. No oversharing. While drinking, some people lose control after a few drinks and start sharing their entire life story. When drunk, they lose their fear and speak freely about past joys and sorrows. However, smart people don't do this. They understand that oversharing while drinking can harm their image and even ruin their future. Lack of self-control and drunken rambling can prevent success in life. 3. No harsh words to someone's face. Wise people think carefully before speaking. They consider how their words will affect others and try to express themselves gently, avoiding hurtful language. Being blunt is not an excuse to say things that hurt others. 4. No gossiping behind backs. Smart people avoid talking behind others' backs. Eleanor Roosevelt once said, Great minds discuss ideas. Average minds discuss events. Small minds discuss people. Gossiping is not only pointless, but also creates trouble. Address issues directly rather than speaking ill behind someone's back, as it shows a lack of culture and emotional intelligence. Gossiping can damage your reputation and make others view you negatively. 5. No complaining or self-pity. Life is full of challenges, but smart people try not to complain too much. Instead of blaming others, they look within themselves for solutions. Complaining doesn't solve problems and only spreads negativity. Occasional complaints are fine, but constant negativity drives people away and prevents success. 6. No bragging about wealth. People who lack confidence often brag. Smart people understand that showing off only reveals insecurities. True confidence comes from humility and authenticity. Boasting about temporary achievements can lead to unforeseen consequences. 14. Roots and Branches Once upon a time, there was a young man who loved to brag about himself. One day, his master took him to a tree and asked, Do you think the top of this tree is beautiful? 
Of course, the top is full of fresh, beautiful flowers, the young man quickly replied. At that moment, a gust of wind blew and the tree's top rustled. The master asked, Did you hear that? Yes, the sound of the tree's top is so clear and pleasant, the young man responded eagerly. But do you know what the top of a tree is called in Chinese? It's called mat, the master said. Then he pointed to the roots and asked, Do you see the roots of the tree? Do you hear any sound from them? The young man frowned and replied, The roots are buried in the ground, so how can we see them? Also, the roots are silent, so how can we hear them, master? But do you know what the roots are called in Chinese? They are called bon, the master explained. This means that while the top of the tree with its flowers may draw attention and seem beautiful, it is fragile and can break with a strong wind, losing its value. The roots, although silent and hidden underground, are the foundation of life. Without them, there would be no tree, no leaves, no branches, and of course, no flowers to show off. Do you understand my point? The young man bowed his head and nodded, understanding his master's lesson. From that day on, he became more modest, spoke with more restraint, and never bragged in front of others again. 15. Embrace these three valuable habits for a peaceful midlife. In life, there are no ifs, only consequences and results. By middle age, most people understand this truth. When you reach middle age, every day starts with the need for money. Earning money becomes a never-ending task and responsibility. Many middle-aged people are so busy that they exhaust their health and time. Some say it's better to live a worthy life than to just focus on making money. Indeed, a truly valuable midlife consists of these three things. 1. Value your health. Arthur Schopenhauer, the German philosopher, once said, The greatest mistake a person can make is to sacrifice health for other things. Some say having health doesn't mean having everything, but losing health means losing everything. When you're middle-aged, the pressures of life increase. Many people wear out their bodies without realizing it until it's too late. Hospitalization for a day can erase months of hard work. There's a saying, maintaining health isn't difficult or time-consuming. It's simply a lifestyle change. In our youth, we often think that working hard and earning money is accumulating wealth. But as more people reach middle age, they realize that maintaining health is a true asset. If you're still overworking yourself to make money in midlife, wake up and change your lifestyle. This is how you show self-love in middle age. 2. Maintain relationships to enhance family life. By middle age, fatigue becomes common. Work and family responsibilities can lead to drifting apart from loved ones. Running a family is like managing a business. You need the right goals and a sincere attitude. An old saying goes, Our biggest daily mistake is being too polite to strangers and too harsh with those close to us. Many people face a situation where their career is booming, but their family is falling apart. Managing a marriage is never easier than running a business. Be understanding, tolerant of small things, Communicate more to resolve conflicts. This is the key to maintaining harmony in the family. In life, not everything is about right or wrong. Home is a place for affection. Blaming each other only drives hearts further apart. 3. Manage emotions and keep an open heart. On Jihu, someone asked, What is the ideal state after middle age? A popular answer was, The best state in midlife is to prioritize your mindset and manage your emotions. Kazuo Inamori, a Japanese business and life philosophy master, said in his book, The Way to Live, Everything in life is attracted by the magnet in your heart, and illnesses are no exception. Thus, you and longevity are only separated by a healthy mindset.
The most important thing in midlife is learning to love yourself well. Age is never a shackle, and midlife doesn't mean decline. Cultivating a healthy body, managing a happy and harmonious family, and nurturing a calm state of mind are the greatest wealth in the latter half of life. If you like this video, please comment 1. And if you don't, comment 2. Your feedback means a lot to us. Thank you for your valuable time. 16. Three Pitfalls of Greed to Avoid in Life Everyone wishes for wealth and prosperity, but when these desires become endless, they turn into greed. Falling into these three traps of greed can lead to a lifetime of blind busyness. The ancients often said, greed is like fire. If not extinguished in time, it will burn down the entire forest. Greed is like water. If not controlled, it will turn into a flood and destroy everything in its path. Human ambition is bottomless. If left unchecked, greed will only grow, eventually consuming everything, including ourselves. Wise people understand that there are three things you should not be greedy for. Knowing when to stop can lead to a more carefree life. 1. Greed for Fame Most of us pursue success and status to gain recognition and respect from others. This isn't inherently wrong, but many people prioritize these goals incorrectly. Success should be based on personal development first, not on fame or reputation. Real fame should come from true capability and valuable contributions. Otherwise, it's just hollow. As Mencius said, if you don't achieve the desired results, examine yourself. If your words and actions are correct, sooner or later, people will agree with you. In today's workplace, many job titles sound impressive but lack real power. For most of us, Fame doesn't bring significant benefits. Instead of seeking fame, it's better to pursue genuine values for ourselves. 2. Greed for comfort Those who crave comfort are often willing to think but not act. Staying in their comfort zone makes them reluctant to change. However, indulging in comfort without striving can leave you unprepared when a crisis hits. The worst thing is losing the will to fight and the courage to act because of too much comfort. You can rest, but don't cling to it. Without effort, your comfort zone can destroy your future. Perseverance through hardship makes you appreciate happiness even more. 3. Greed for small gains Small profits won't make you rich, but losing trust and respect for them can ruin your future. The famous Chinese writer Zhang Heng believed that those who focus on small gains often struggle to avoid bigger mistakes. Far-sighted people don't waste future opportunities for short-term benefits. When Chinese real estate mogul Feng Lun graduated, a businessman friend asked him to study market conditions and offered to pay him. Despite the friend's insistence, Feng Lun refused the money, saying, It's just a bit of effort and we're friends. No need to be so formal. This businessman appreciated Feng Lun's attitude and partnered with him, helping him enter the investment field and eventually leading the industry. Beijing Normal University professor and writer Yu Don once said that 99% of people are greedy for small gains and suffer significant losses, while the winners often come from the remaining 1%. Nothing in this world is free. Every gift comes with a cost. Avoiding greed for small profits and focusing on self-discipline is essential for a better future. 17. Use these three ways to handle being wronged. In life, we meet all kinds of people, and often, you can't see their true nature right away. Even though people are generally good, some are unpredictable. Some may seem kind and innocent, but actually plot behind your back. You can't judge a person solely by their appearance. Their true character shows in the details and attitudes in everyday life. On our journey, we'll meet helpful people and harmful ones. As the saying goes, trust the honest, but beware of the deceitful. Good and bad people can be very similar in small ways. 
so it's hard to avoid being hurt if someone intends to harm you. So, when wronged, don't react impulsively. Instead, follow these three steps. 1. Stay calm. In any situation, keeping calm is essential. Only then can we think clearly and make good decisions. When emotions take over, failure follows. Pleasing everyone is impossible, and we can't stop someone from wanting to hurt us. So, the best approach is to learn how to handle it when it happens. Stay calm and assess the situation to find a solution. A truly smart person won't fall for the trap of provocation and losing control. 2. Don't retaliate. Some people become more persistent the more attention you give them. If you blindly fight back, you might end up harming yourself. When wronged and your interests are hurt, many choose anger and revenge. But revenge brings unpredictable dangers. Before acting, ask yourself, will I be truly happy if the other person suffers too, or will I become as bad as them? As the old saying goes, one moment of patience brings nine moments of peace. Sometimes, knowing someone's schemes is enough without reacting. Living well, even better than before, is the best revenge. It's not weakness or cowardice, but smart living to avoid unforeseen harm. Every relationship can have calculations and bad intentions. Don't worry too much. The most important thing is to protect your interests and live your life well. 3. Keep a proper distance. Often, engaging with someone doesn't mean anything. Some people don't deserve your time, and focusing on them drains your energy. Instead, stay calm and avoid unnecessary disputes. Understand that life inevitably includes schemes and hurt. When you're wronged, know how to keep your distance to avoid further harm. Our lives are filled with many experiences, and our good or bad luck comes from how we treat the world. No matter how well you live, some people won't like you. When dealing with bad people, you can choose to avoid or confront them, but always keep your limits and principles. Don't do anything extreme, or you'll end up facing worse consequences than what you imposed on them. 18. Nine quotes to wake you up immediately. 1. Many wealthy people owe their success to their parents. As someone once said, without a strong backing, you can't afford to fall. In other words, if you don't have an umbrella, you need to run faster. If your family isn't wealthy, you need to work even harder. If you're not rich at 20, it might be your parents' fault, but if you're still thinking that way at 35, it's time to wake up. 2. Some people want to continue their studies but worry about being too old. Think about it. If you don't, you'll still get older, just without a degree to help you advance. Would you rather struggle now or regret quitting later? 3. Benjamin Franklin once said, Some people die at 25 but aren't buried until 75. Make sure you don't die at 25. Life is like riding a bicycle. If you stop, you'll fall. 4. There's a strange truth. Fancy cars like BMWs are parked outside businesses and schools while bicycles and scooters are parked outside internet cafes and bars. Of course, there are exceptions. This doesn't mean the poor are lazy, they just work hard in the wrong places. That's why the rich keep getting richer and the poor stay poor. Success has formulas, and you can find plenty on Google. You know this, but you still procrastinate. 5. As a student, you might think money isn't important, but if you still think that at 25, you need to change your mindset. The longer you live, the more you'll realize that life often revolves around money, money, money. 6. Your success must outpace your parents' aging, I once read online. Men often reach the peak of their careers around 35, but by then, their parents are too old to wait for gratitude. Work hard to succeed so your parents can benefit from it while they're still around. 7. Grown men shouldn't share everything online. 
Spending your youth glued to a screen liking others' photos is a waste of your precious time. Life has more to offer than perfecting your social media presence. 8. In the popular Korean drama. Reply 1988, there's a poignant line. Adults are just enduring. They're busy with grown-up issues trying to appear strong to shoulder their responsibilities. Adults feel pain too. Men are afraid to show their vulnerabilities for fear of being seen as weak, but everyone has their struggles. You have the right to feel tired and complain. Just don't dwell on it too long. 9. I read online, your parents are getting old. Suppose they live another 20 years. If you visit once a year after this new year, you only have 19 visits left. When you're away, you'll realize family is more than just a name. On the street, no one gives you free tea or wet towels. At home, your mom never counts the cost of the delicious meals she makes. This new year, turn off your phone and spend more time with your parents. There aren't many opportunities left. 19. 4. Types of statements that reflect destiny. The more you say, the more fortune slips away. Whether in work or life, foolish people speak with their mouths, smart people speak with their heads, and wise people speak with their hearts. We must accept everything life throws at us, good or bad. Believing in destiny doesn't mean accepting fate. If you work hard and think correctly, you can change what is called destiny. For those who don't make an effort to change and constantly complain, blame, and speak recklessly, their fate will worsen and they will struggle to escape a hard life. Life is unfair, and we need to get used to that. Remember to avoid these four types of statements. 1. Complaining and blaming. There's an old saying, first blame yourself, then blame others. When things don't go our way, instead of blaming fate, the heavens, or those around us, we should first reflect on ourselves, Check if we've made any mistakes and correct them. Many people start complaining as soon as they encounter difficulties. They don't see their own shortcomings and just assume they are destined for hardship, always playing the victim. Remember, when facing difficulties, reflect on yourself and strive harder. Complaining will only make life poorer. As the saying goes, no family stays poor for three generations, and no one struggles for three lifetimes. Even if you are poor, working hard will eventually lead to success. Even the rich must work continuously to maintain their wealth. So, there's no reason to accept poverty and only complain without trying to improve yourself. 2. Arrogant Talk There's a saying, Heaven brings rain and arrogance brings disaster. No matter how talented you are, arrogance never leads to good results. Truly wise people avoid pride. No matter your achievements, never be overly proud. Don't assume you're always right and others are wrong. There's always a higher mountain and a more talented person. If you live without humility and only show off, you'll face consequences sooner or later. People who maintain harmony with others are usually respected, while arrogant people, despite their temporary glory, are often disliked behind their backs. 3. Gossip and Idle Talk Instead of gossiping about others, spend time reflecting on yourself. Gossiping is meaningless and brings no value to you. It can unintentionally spread rumors and cause trouble. No one is perfect, so discussing others right and wrong only makes your life harder. There's a saying, you can eat carelessly, but never speak carelessly. Eating carelessly might only give you a stomachache, but careless words can ruin a life. Wise people avoid gossip, smart people don't believe in nonsense, and clever people choose their words carefully. Speaking truthfully protects others and yourself. 4. Hurtful Words Words cost nothing, so many people use them carelessly without thinking of the consequences. They justify their hurtful remarks with harsh words but a kind heart. It's better not to speak if your words have no substance 
and it's better to stay silent if your words lack kindness. Whether at work or in life, foolish people speak with their mouths, smart people speak with their heads, and wise people speak with their hearts. Kind words are like warm fires, while hurtful words are sharp like spears. A careless remark might not endanger your life in today's society, but it can damage relationships and hurt others. So, be careful when you speak to avoid hurting others and planting seeds of negativity. Ultimately, you will bear the consequences yourself. 20. Six Surprising Rules from Steve Adcock Steve Adcock and his wife retired early in their 30s. The self-made millionaire credits his wealth to smart investments, frugal living, and breaking societal norms. In 2016, Steve Adcock retired at 35 with $900,000 saved, which grew to $1 million within a few years. I wasn't born wealthy. I started as an office worker with a 9-to-5 job five days a week. I didn't inherit money or win the lottery, and I was never the smartest person at the company. Instead, I lived frugally, invested wisely, and built a solid career. Most importantly, I didn't follow conventional wisdom. Here are the six social rules Adcock set and followed to become a millionaire by age 38. 1. Be selfish at the right time. Adcock calls this healthy selfishness. Prioritizing yourself means putting your mental and physical health first. This includes knowing when to say no. As an introvert, Adcock often declines social invitations or leaves meetings when he needs personal time. He ignores phone calls if he's not in the right space to talk. For him, working out is a form of meditation, so he always makes time for the gym. I feel more energized and productive after leaving the gym, he says. 2. Pursue your passion. Passions might not always pay the bills, but you can still keep them alive. Many people are passionate about creative pursuits, but earning a high salary in these fields can be tough. My passion is photography, but I chose computer science because I was good at it, and tech jobs tend to pay well. I took photos in my spare time and never felt pressured to make money from it. So, it remains my passion, Adcock says. 3. Speak up. I always voiced my opinions quickly, especially when I thought a business move was wrong. Pointing out improvements my team could make helped me land my first leadership role as a director. If I had stayed silent in meetings, I wouldn't have moved up to leadership positions or earned higher salaries so quickly. Speaking up isn't about showing off. It's about actively shaping a new path. 4. Don't rush life. Overworking to the point of burnout won't make you more successful. Taking time to relax and unwind helps relieve stress and recharge after a good day's work. You'll be more productive during the day if you make time for yourself. I watch Netflix almost every night to relax. I'm also a huge sports fan and play in several fantasy football leagues. I wake up at 7 a.m. to control my day and make time for these relaxing hobbies, Adcock says. 5. Take risks. A decade ago, I had the chance to jump two management levels with a big promotion. I didn't feel ready for the job, but I took it anyway. I learned a lot by accepting the challenge. That leap set me on a higher-paying trajectory for the rest of my career. It gave me more confidence in my abilities, Adcock recalls. If you have the chance to take on more responsibility than you think you can handle, Adcock's best advice is to be brave and go for it. Taking risks can lead to promotions, raises, and other opportunities to make more money later. 6. Kindness Wins Kindness opens doors. Much of Adcock's success comes from his kind nature and behavior in the office. He's known as easy to work with, making management more likely to involve him in major projects. I found that having strong ethics and being a great teammate can lead to better opportunities over time. Don't lead with fear or aggression when you can lead with compassion and inclusivity, Adcock shares. 
21. The Colorful Life Life is colorful and varied, not always as we imagine. Feeling sad, disappointed, or losing faith. That's nothing for someone like me who's been through so many emotions. Happiness is fragile and hard to hold on to. It never lasts forever. It seems we never realize what we have until it's gone. Only then do we regret letting it slip away. Does life still have meaning when people treat each other with invisible masks every day? Can we trust each other when everyone is being fake? Why do we hide our flaws and criticize others? Some people even harm others' reputations out of jealousy. Don't they know they're lowering their own self-worth and losing their dignity? Is it really that hard to be honest with each other? In today's modern, developed society, is there still humanity when conflicts are settled with fists and weapons, causing bloodshed over trivial matters and leaving loved ones in pain? Is there fairness when everything is resolved quietly with money, buying peace for oneself at the cost of injustice for others? Even I don't understand why I've started to distrust life like this. I feel I can't trust anyone anymore. Is it really that hopeless? Maybe when I can't cry anymore, when everything becomes too overwhelming, the only thing I can do is smile, work hard to forget, and hope to heal my wounded heart. Only by smiling can I hide my feelings so no one knows how truly desperate I am. But right now, I'm really tired of facing and fighting everything alone. I'm exhausted both physically and emotionally. What should I do? If you find these stories inspiring and they motivate you to take action, please comment 9. If not, comment 0. Your feedback means a lot to us. Thank you for your valuable time. 22. Life and Embraces What's the most important part of the human body to you? Everyone's answer might be different. For me, it's the embrace. From birth to growing up and even until I leave this world, it's always in an embrace. When I was born, I was placed in my mother's arms. Her body was in pain and exhausted from childbirth, but her embrace was still soft and warm. I grew up in my grandmother's arms, with her singing lullabies to me during afternoon naps. Though she was old and weak, her embrace was strong, holding me tight to ensure I wouldn't wake up startled. As I continued to grow, my father's arms held me. His hands were big, strong, and rough from life's hardships. He would carry me to bed whenever I fell asleep in a chair or somewhere else in the house. Even now, I remember the dreamy feeling of being carried by my father. In school, I lived freely among the embraces of friends. I often look at a photo of my best friend hugging me under a phoenix tree, both of us smiling brightly. Friendship is so warm and comforting. When I entered adulthood and faced inevitable mistakes, the embrace of the one I love was there, sheltering and helping me stand firm against life's storms. That embrace is where I find understanding, warmth, and happiness in the years ahead. On sleepless nights, when thinking of a loved one who has passed away, I wonder about the embraces that will hold me when it's my time to go. Yet no matter how warm those embraces are, they can't take away the chill of death. In those moments, I long for a tight embrace. I want to nestle into the arms of those I love and extend my arms to those who need my sympathy and care. The happiest person is the one who brings happiness to others. I may not be sure if I truly bring happiness to others when I give them an embrace, but I believe I've done something for them, and just that thought makes me feel happy. A shoulder is a reliable place to seek sympathy and comfort. An embrace soothes pain and shares joy. It can convey unspoken words. I understand how you feel. I miss you so much. I'm so glad you're here. Cry if you need to, or you are very important to me. Whenever you receive these messages from someone's embrace, remember that you are the luckiest and happiest person. So know how to give and receive embraces. 23. The Race of Faith In the winter of 1968 in Mexico City, the clock showed 10 minutes to 7. 
Tanzanian athlete John Stephen Awari was limping to the finish line of the Olympic marathon, his leg bandaged. He was the last competitor to finish the race that year. The winners had already received their medals and the award ceremony was over. The stadium was nearly empty as Akwari, with his injured leg bleeding, struggled to complete his final lap. Only Bud Greenspan, a famous documentary filmmaker, remained, watching in amazement as Akwari approached. Curious, Bud walked over to the exhausted runner and asked why he had pushed himself to finish when the race had ended long ago and there were no spectators left in the stadium. John Stephen replied, gasping for breath, I am very happy to have finished the race with all my effort. My country did not send me 9,000 miles just to start the race. They sent me to finish it. 24. Every day is a gift. My brother-in-law pulled out the bottom drawer of the desk where my sister used to work and took out a package wrapped in tissue paper. He tore off the paper and showed me a small pair of panties inside. They were cute, made of soft silk with lace trim, and still had the price tag on them, a pretty hefty sum. John bought these when we first went to New York, eight or nine years ago, but she never wore them. She was saving them for a special occasion. Now, there's no other occasion but this. He took the panties from my hand, placed them on the bed with the other clothes we were going to bury her with, caressed them for a moment, then slammed the drawer shut and turned to me. Never save anything for a special occasion. Every day you're alive is a special occasion. His words stayed with me from that moment on, through the days that followed as I helped him and my niece arrange my sister's funeral. My sister had passed away so unexpectedly. On the flight back home after the funeral, I kept thinking about those words, about all my sister's unfulfilled dreams, about the things she did without realizing they were special. And I realized, life is full of sweet moments to enjoy whenever we can, not just to get by. So I decided to change. I started reading more and worrying less about trivial things. I enjoyed watching the scenery from my porch and didn't get upset about the weeds in the garden. I spent more time with family and friends and cut back on less meaningful social events. I stopped saving things. I used all my pretty china and crystal on any occasion that felt special, like losing a pound, unclogging the sink, or seeing the first camellia bloom. I wore my favorite dresses to the market if I felt like it. When I felt fancy, I could pay extra for a small bag of vegetables without frowning. I wouldn't save my best perfume for special occasions anymore, no matter what store clerks or other people whispered. I started phasing out phrases like someday or one of these days from my vocabulary. If something was worth seeing, hearing, or doing, I'd do it right away. I don't know what my sister would have done if she knew she wouldn't be here the next day, the day we all assume will come. I think she might have called her family and a few close friends. Maybe she would have made plans to meet some old friends to apologize and make amends. Or she might have gone out for a meal I'd never know about. The little things left undone would bother me if I knew my time was limited. I'd be annoyed because I hadn't visited good friends I planned to see someday. I'd regret not writing those letters I meant to write in a few days. I'd be upset and regretful that I hadn't told my husband and daughter more often how much I love them. I'm working hard not to procrastinate, hold back, or save anything that could bring more laughter and richness to our lives. And every morning when I wake up, I remind myself, today is a special day. Every day, every minute, every breath is a gift of life. We don't know what might happen to us in the strange and unpredictable chain of events in life. However, we can decide what happens inside us, how we see and accept things, and what we do with them. And that's the key. 25. Happiness around us. Happiness means not having things that make us unhappy. It's about our inner state, not external values. By strengthening our spirit, we can easily control issues related to suffering and happiness. 
Everyone has a large reserve of happiness within, regardless of circumstances. We often suffer because we don't recognize this happiness. If we identify it, we realize happiness is right here with us. This is similar to a story in the Lotus Sutra about a poor man who discovers a priceless gem in his pocket and becomes wealthy. We need a method to recognize our happiness and see life as beautiful and meaningful. Happiness and suffering are within our control, and we should embrace our happiness. Happiness is about not having things that make us unhappy. This inner state is what determines happiness, not external values. By strengthening our spirit, we can easily control issues related to suffering and happiness. Happiness comes from suffering, and suffering from physical pleasure. Enjoying pleasures often leads to suffering, which then contributes to happiness. It's like a skilled builder using bamboo to create a cozy home. We need patience and skill to turn our suffering into sources of happiness, seeing life as beautiful and exciting. When we say happiness is within us, we also acknowledge that suffering is there too. We're talking about everyday happiness, not eternal bliss. Suffering and happiness are two sides of the same coin, shaped by our living conditions and our endless thoughts. We often blame our circumstances for our happiness or sadness, but enlightened people know that the first kind of suffering stems from the second. Most people think suffering comes from their surroundings, tied to material needs, personal likes and dislikes, impacting their mental state with emotions like joy, anger, love, and hatred. Even if life is materially sufficient, lacking love, understanding, and empathy leads to unhappiness. Closing off your heart means missing out on life's simple pleasures. More possessions often mean more worries. Most people wrongly think suffering is caused by their circumstances, leading to a life stuck in a self-made mire. The truth is, suffering starts from within. Solve your inner issues and you change your circumstances. People suffer from money, love, fame, and desires, often craving more than their basic needs, leading to inevitable frustration. These cravings stem from ignorance and blind passion, causing great suffering. Recognize your suffering as an illness of the spirit and create your own remedy from this suffering. Once the remedy works, keep using it. In everyday life, we need to study, work, and live according to societal norms, creating material wealth for a fulfilling life. Recognizing this as happiness doesn't mean giving up ambition, but balancing material and spiritual pursuits. Material happiness is fleeting compared to the joy of spiritual love and creativity. Admit that material happiness is necessary, as it's hard won through lifelong effort. We should live healthily, stay close to nature, protect our health, and enjoy leisure. Avoid extreme thoughts and recognize true happiness. Chasing temporary external happiness isn't enough. We must also battle our inner turmoil. Facing ourselves means facing our suffering. Understanding why we suffer allows us to transform suffering into happiness. Misperceptions about life and circumstances cause suffering. Life is impermanent, always changing, leading to despair when we lose what we thought was permanent. Understand your endless thoughts as the source of happiness and suffering. Choose the right attitude for happiness, recognizing and embracing it for a fulfilled life. Develop a flexible spirit to withstand life's tragedies. Let go of possessive ambitions to overcome them and receive well-deserved rewards. Focus on understanding others, avoiding excessive pursuit of love and material support. Relationships are about destiny, and when destiny ends, let go. This understanding helps us mature through suffering. Transforming suffering into happiness isn't easy, as our ignorant thoughts are endless. Regularly examine your spirit, seeking guidance from a mentor if needed. Recognize the difference between real and false values. Knowing that letting go of material attachments is to save your suffering spirit, not to add to it. Letting go brings freedom, 
and life's true meaning. Appreciate the moment's value. Ignorance leads to suffering, like a child choosing a cookie over gold. Happiness is within you, and recognizing it prevents suffering. Everything has value when used fully. Objects have objective value based on their use. A strong spirit rises above material attachment, adapting to changing circumstances with the value chart of life. This perspective makes everything in life beautiful and meaningful, fulfilling your dreams of happiness. Suffering has value if used to create happiness, like a beautiful flower blooming in darkness. It purifies the spirit, surpassing trivial joys. Use small joys to ease great suffering, but the main solution is finding the right spiritual remedy. Once healed, happiness blooms, and you discover the priceless gem in your pocket. If you like this video, please comment 1, and if you don't, comment 2. Your feedback means a lot to us. Thank you for your valuable time.